I did a show and it was for a drag act um, and there was uh, male strippers are cutting about and um, they've got like grinders and they're kind of hitting them <laughs> off with like, metal pants and all that and eating sparkles. Yeah, we're another one. We're another one. <laughs> and I'm just like, what the hell's going on? Um, that's, our then next, they... that's going to be our next gig. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the next video. <laughs> A metal cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they turned up with this really, really dodgy um, USB key and they were like, all our music's on this, you need to play it. Hello and welcome to Dermist Mondays. I'm Ali. I'm Craig. And this week we thought we would talk about our upcoming video for In My Dreams, which we shot in a undisclosed location, which we're going to talk about tonight. We stumbled across a really, really interesting project and we're really, really delighted tonight to have the creator of that project join us tonight so tonight we'd like to welcome chris duddy Woo! thanks for coming on uh, dermis mondays chris it's great to have you on it's no problem it's uh breaks up the, the lockdown i got introduced to you chris because of, we were looking for a venue to do another video and i'm pretty sure i just found you on instagram i'm sure that i saw some of the visual stuff that you were doing I think it was the archway, the door uh, piece that you've been doing. But I just saw the image of it and I was so intrigued and I had no idea that it was so close by. And I actually contacted one of my council contacts and said, who's in the old co-op building? And somebody got back to me and said, I think it's this guy, get in contact. That was how we hooked up. That's how you make pals these days, isn't it? Yeah, so the video was out in the Friday the 21st. It's hard to believe that's it coming out now, but it feels like ages since we've spoke Chris so it's good to see you yeah yeah it's good to see you guys as well good to have you in the in the place there usually it's just me on my own so having people wandering about and playing about all the gear give us a wee bit of background about you and what you've been up to in the past and what sort of projects you've been working on before you reached project Fi and, and doing the work you're doing now I used to work in events or I still if events still happened I would still work in events um, and over the years, um, I started picking up a lot of video uh, knowledge because uh, uh, I know like, some film guys and stuff like that. And um, I started looking into uh, messing about with projectors because usually I would be dealing with sound and projectors anyway and a bit of light. Uh, and started reading up about these uh, projection mapping projects and all that. And, they really kind of interested me. I quite liked the, the idea of animating objects. And um, a few years ago, I went to a, a, the Sonica Festival. Yeah, yeah. Where's that? I don't know if you've ever heard that. It's uh, well, it's here. It's in uh, Scotland, but it's in different places. And it's uh, I think it's run by Cryptic Sound and Light Arts and all that. And the, the thing that I went and saw was uh, they turned the the Clyde Tunnel into like an alien experience. I, I took my, my wee boy to, to see that. It wasn't me, it was my sister that took him uh, to go and see that. It was incredible. It was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. It was great. And I think um, that was the thing that really kind of spurred me on because I've always worked on wee bits and bobs for other people. But I was like, you know what, I could, I could do this myself because <laughs> I was walking through it and going, I know what that is. I could, I've got one of them kicking about, you know. And I, <laughs> I should do it. <laughs> and I went, right, I'm just going to get all the bits together and start doing that. It's such a cool niche, honestly. See, we, the first time we went into that, your, your place, I was like, I was like going into a different planet. It was so cool. <laughs> all this stuff like that. I'm just so, I'm so unknowledgeable with stuff like that. And it was just like, whoa, like that, like, uh, Massive projector, the the main one you had set up. That was just amazing. Yeah, that's a that's a old piece of that. Um, and I, I mainly got that actually to go do some projections in uh, Dunoo. All right. Uh, I was asked. I don't know if you know. It's a castle. It's out yeah, yeah. in Ayrshire. And yeah. uh, there was a project that we were supposed to be working on, and uh, big, again lockdown happened <laughs> um, so I was like right okay and uh, I'd created all this stuff and I was like right well I've got this projector anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna use that on the, the project for stuff because it was always small projectors that I used yeah that's, a, that's the projection mapping it's just something that I quite like doing and adding kind of audio 
soundscapes to kind of make it seem like you're in a, in a different place. <laughs> you see this stuff on the internet, you see guys, you see projections and, and sort of experimental imagery things and trying to replace like fire uh, works displays by having LED drone lighting effects and things yeah, like that. Yeah. You see these things that these people do and you, very rarely do you meet these people that actually create these <laughs> things, you know, it's like, oh, man, that's amazing, like, who, who actually does that? Um, so it was so odd to kind of stumble across something that was that was so close by. How did it get to Project Fi then? Like, what's the name all about and, and why Project Fi? Project Fi, Fi is like a, a measurement and it was to do with like the golden ratio and so on. And Project Fi is just a space where all that kind of stuff happens, created it years and years ago right. and now this is it starting to kind of come to life now that I've actually got access to a big dark space and it's more like a kind of surreal reflection on all the crap that you, it, that's happening so it's got you know influences from the, the bad things and the good things that you see on social media and all that kind of stuff it's so what, what's the golden like ratio? That. I'm not I'm not up on my, my golden ratios. So the, go, <laughs> the golden, <laughs> golden ratio is the, the ratio that you can find in everything from life. So like the patterns and light, right. leaves and cells and all that, and the uh, spirals of like shale, uh, shells and snail shells and all that, that ah, all right, uses okay. the golden ratio. Right. Uh, and and the, the pyramids are made to the golden ratio. Ah. I think it's... Uh, 1.6425 or something like that. I can't remember. It's actually in the email address. <laughs> uh, the, the, That's smart, so, man. I'm, I'm uh, That's cool. It's, it's usually your um, day of birth, you know. It's usually like the year you uh, were born. <laughs> um, Glastonbury, the original pyramid, was built on the... Um, the original pyramid stage was built on the golden ratio because the guys that originally kind of set into that were all into, like, ley lines and all that kind of stuff. It's all... Uh, like kind of old, I suppose old world technologies. So a lot of the, the audio and all that is all using like uh, old tape that I've found and kind of uh, picked up signals from like radio stations, number stations. That's amazing. And all. That's like the visual equivalent of the change that they kind of see. Yeah, all, yeah. Didn't they? I think it was uh, four three two hertz was like the natural tuning for like many years so a lot of old orchestral music was played in 432 but I'm sure the Rockefellers were involved in the conspiracy as it goes and <laughs> it got changed to 440 I mean it, it's it. total tinfoil hat stuff but it's quite interesting to look into uh, this is the ruining of the world there you know it's, uh, keep us all depressed yes. and sad and... Uh, that's it <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's lighting up now <laughs> Your Facebook has been limited. You cannot post for three weeks. Yeah. Until you have learned your lesson. It reminds me of a, a movie. It was out called uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Saw yeah. That. Uh-huh, that's no. right. And it, so everyone, because of technology and all that, everyone was getting like tumours and diseases and all that. And then they, they had to get this note that they put through a military dolphin and <laughs> what? healed the world. Yeah. <laughs> People were using their brains as like hard drives and transporting data in it and all that, and that was killing them. It was wild. All that it's stuff sounds movie, crazy, though. but like, see, in 10 years' time, that'll just be. It's like James Bond, you know? It's like, it's just uh, boring now. It's running a mill, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's we're, it. we're getting to that point. James Bond never uh, put polonium oh. in anyone's shoes or anything like that. You know? <laughs> 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 What are your dogs called? Oh, I've only got the one. His name's Winston. Winston. <laughs> what kind of dog? He's a staffy. Brilliant. We never named him. It was just that we were told that was his name, and then we went to pick him up. They went, no, his name's TJ. And I, I was like, well, why were we told it was Winston? It's like, oh, we, we didn't, we didn't uh, get his name right. And it was like, all right, okay, well, Winston it is. <laughs> <laughs> this Friday, our... Uh video for In My Dreams comes out and you'll all get a chance to see it um, on Friday evening, I think we'll probably put it out for a premiere we managed to capture some amazing footage and without having to go to a lot of effort because of all the amazing work that you've done Chris and uh, and the, the projections that you've set up there already um, have you ever worked on any other music projects before? 
I've not really worked on anything like this. Um, I mean, I've worked on projects where it's required lights and all that, but I've never really had the freedom to just go and do what I wanted, you know. Uh, when I met you guys, you guys just went, give me some visuals and I kind of put up what I had and he's we're quite happy with that. Most, uh, most other people are kind of, oh, well, that's too fancy. I just want uh, some lights or something, some flashing lights, strobes or... <laughs> You know, the, just the pixel tubes or whatever, um, uh, and, and that kind of thing. But uh, no, I've not had, done anything like like this. I've just aware, we've not really touched upon the current installations that you've got in there, or the ones that you're currently working on. So just tell us a wee bit about, um, we've got that tree creation that's coming out of the middle of the floor, and then the archway, the doorway. Tell us a wee bit about that and about what they are, and, you know, because some people might walk past and, and catch it, and be nice to kind of give them a wee insight into to what it's all about. Um, well, the tree is kind of like a, a spin-off of um, the the original forest that, that I built. Um, but it's a bit a bit darker in its topic. It's like uh, once it's done, there'll be projections, um, just kind of documenting, I suppose, all the, the bad stuff. <laughs> has been happening over over lockdown. Uh, it's called the hanging tree, that one. <laughs> Which kind of says it with its kind of title, doesn't it? But the um, the other one, uh, the gate, it's quite a, it, it's meant to be like a kind of doorway to other worlds. So you would be looking at that and uh, over time, there's different places. And uh, the audio is kind of built into it to kind of make you, uh, through like picking up signals from on long wave, uh, radio and all that of other places in other countries ah, cool. um, the the idea would be to build in a kind of a vr uh, so, uh, a vr uh, element to it so that people could use their phones right. uh, and be like say they were in a park somewhere and they could use their phone and see the gate there so they're all linked Oh. Um, to different places that is and that's just very, very the, the cool. base model yeah that would be really really smart because I know people can see it from the the outside you know if they're walking down the high street they can look in but they're maybe not getting that full uh, experience with maybe like hearing the music and being inside the inside the place yeah. itself but actually to be able to put on VR and, and see that anywhere you know in got a time or... for that then like when's that going to be implemented because I'd love to see it and get involved I'm learning the the, the VR kit, um, which is quite quite a thing to get your head oh, around. I've got some imagine. of it, um, but it's just trying to make it accessible for everyone. Because uh, I don't want it to only work on iPhones, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. Um, I'd say in a couple of months there'll be there'll be the beginnings of uh, of that aspect, and you'll be able to see it there and hold your phone up to it and see see the the visuals and so on because the main problem with projection mapping is it needs dark spaces uh, and uh, as we go into summer uh, I'm kind of aiming more towards the, the augmented reality virtual reality so, aspects of it so is that like similar to like the like the Instagram stories and Snapchat and stuff like that is that the same kind of technology like the facial recognition stuff is it all that? It's similar. It's a bit more like Pokemon Go. I was oh, going right, to say, yeah. yeah, when you walk around and you, 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 you pick up Pokemons. I've never done that, yeah. by the way. Pokemon. the record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like bringing people out into the open to connect, bringing back the kind of social networks in real life using this uh, augmented reality uh, technology. That's incredible. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, I, I hope this gets out there so that more people can find out about it and maybe get yeah. some people involved as well because I, I, I know so many people that would be it, be into that. Once you've sussed it, we can it. put on an augmented reality gig event <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be epic. That would be good. Have you got any musical influences that you um, are, are into? I know that like Craig and I are big fans of, of Kraftwerk and... Uh, we went to see them at the Royal Concert Hall a couple of years, I could say a couple of years ago, but quite a number of years ago now, five or six years ago, and we were just blown away by the simplicity of their, their visuals and the 3D show that they put on. 
um, and I think that's that, that's what created a passion for us about having good visuals and yeah. I know we're only touching on it a wee bit with the videos uh, but I think that's why we were so drawn to what you're doing at Project Fi was, was just something so bespoke visually but is there any kind of musical influences that you kind of draw upon? Um, yeah. I mean I would love to say that I, I try to copy other musicians or whatever or influence by them but I'm not a musician I can only kind of put together kind of broken sound samples and stuff like that um, but I'd say quite a lot of my stuff is influenced by um, things like The Prodigy and so on uh, yeah. I've, I've really liked I've listened to them since I, well since forever since, <laughs> since they, they were out and it's like that kind of hard electronic kind of soundscape but when I was uh, younger I used to sit up and watch uh, all these kind of I think it was Channel 4, like movies. It was like Tetsu, the, the Iron Man, and all these kind of animes and stuff like that, and all the mad sounds and stuff that was on them. Um, but I'd say most recently, I'm kind of, um, I pick up on things like, uh, there's a guy called Hainback, uh on YouTube. He, he uses like uh, test equipment and uh, like uh, old kind of, like, uh, valve test equipment and all that to make uh, soundscapes and so on. And uh, how do you spell his name? H a i n b a c h. I think. Um, if you type it into Hainback. YouTube, he's pretty big on YouTube. <laughs> um, awesome. And uh, he does a lot of kind of soundscapes and so on. And then you've got guys like uh, Amulets and a lot of the people that do uh, the tape loop type of music. So it's just. Uh, Taking a few chords and then letting the the kind of sounds kind of get, I suppose, warped and destroyed by these uh, runs of tape and stuff like that. A lot of that kind of influences me. <laughs> it's impressive that um, you, you do it all pretty much analog as well, like with the, the tapes and stuff. We we just use uh, do everything digital, and um, like even the stuff that's available, it's so easy. You just hit a key and you've got a soundscape instantly. But I think the, the creativity required to do what you're doing, it's impressive. I think it's a bit easier. It's not all analog. Quite a lot of it is using things like the iPad and all that. But yeah. When I... But the source source audio, I'm guessing, like you're saying, like tube, tube stuff and all that. Yeah. It's not easy to operate, is it? <laughs> no. It, um, I think it's accessible to me because I'm not... Uh, not good with like doing music that's that's uh, the way it is but it's easy for me to take like contact mics and uh, record it onto like a, a cassette player and then uh, mess about with the tape <laughs> it's like, and uh, use like uh, I've got uh, geophones which are like uh, microphones for like sensing uh, ground movement for seismometers and uh, I can set them on things and pick up Rumbles are like the train station and stuff like that. I get the new sample pack for the next yeah. album. <laughs> You're in the band now. <laughs> <laughs> Dustbin lids getting smashed together. There you go. <laughs> That's a nice segue because uh, my last question I've got for you, Chris, is you, you've told us in the past that you're a bit of a hoarder and you like to, well, I was going to say, you like to collect, but you don't. You don't like to get rid of equipment, and you like you don't like seeing anything go to waste, or you don't like people flinging things out. What is either the most interesting piece of equipment you've got, or even your favourite piece of equipment that you've got that you've picked up over the years? And maybe one of the more interesting things that I've got is a. Uh, I've got it right here. Is this uh, we uh, portable reel to reel tape player? Uh, it looks like a Nintendo. Yeah, well, actually, I've got. <laughs> I've got a Nintendo I've got... as well. <laughs> <laughs> as I say this, I go, well, actually, that's not the most interesting. The most interesting one is kind of buried under a pile of garbage over there. Uh, this, uh, this wee tape, real to real tape player, and it means that I can take the tape out and run it around things. And uh, I've I bought a pack of uh, five inch reels because these are three inch reels. I like the extremes of technology, like the 3D printers and stuff, and then I, I like the old 
analogue things and uh, it kind of annoys me when something's working and does its job and someone throws it out just to get something that does the same thing but adds very little to it. I think that's an interesting yeah. point. Like, I think we're at a point now where like most basic computers can do enough processing to do movie editing, music editing and all these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. It's like how far do they actually need to push it? You know when you're always getting the the newest thing but your other thing might like say your iPad and the headphone socket breaks on it and you can't fix it and <laughs> it's like so you have to go buy the newest iPad which is near enough identical but it's just newer and you're like well it's my old one was doing everything that's doing why can't I just get a new headphone socket for it or yeah. You know, it's it, we, there's a lot we throw things away so much um, yeah. when it could just You're be a, a man after fix. my own heart, Chris. I've got I've got an old iPhone here that I've just fixed my daughter's iPhone. With it. I managed to botch two iPhones together into one. It's it's currently in bits. I've got all the screws. Yeah. <laughs> all laid out. I don't know where they go back. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this donor one, but I uh, always part of the DIY. Um, ethos of the band as well yeah, it's very much sort of try and, try and fix things and get uh, something good to start yeah. with so that you hopefully shouldn't need to replace it every five minutes you know I think that's a big thing as well I mean, when I was younger I used to go around uh, picking up TVs <laughs> that people were throwing out and they were really big TVs uh, ones that you wouldn't normally be able to afford and I was selling them to folk that I knew uh, because I could repair them and um, clean them up, you know, and it was like well, there was some of them I was taking. They were just ditched out into the street, um, and I was I would take them in, and make sure they weren't full of water, <laughs> and uh, they worked, and there was nothing wrong. People were just throwing these things out, and it happened. Mm. You know, like when flat screens came in, but you had those really really big cinema TV things, yeah, uh, and people were just ditching them out in the street because um, I used to live. And Deniston, so it was people just oh, ditched right. their stuff out into the street. And now there's a big it, market yeah. for that stuff with like retro gaming and all that as well. All that's came back. Do you know what I mean? All the old monitors. Yeah, yeah. I know someone who collects uh, the computer games, the old ones, and uh, I never realised this that the, you can't play them properly on new TVs. Yeah, although they need Nintendo's to, like, smart, and, smart televisions. Uh, they need yeah. to like emulate the the scan lines and all that. You're like, what is going on? <laughs> it's went, yeah. went full circle. I suppose it's the same with all the audio gear. It's like uh, all the stuff that people were binning uh, is now like so valuable. Have you ever had any like funny disasters or anything that's ever went wrong or funny stories where you've you've done an event and it's maybe not went to plan? Um well, there's been loads of those, I think. We're, the- we've asked so many people <laughs> this question and they go, no, nothing's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, is it just us? <laughs> uh, That's because they've got all the latest technology, yeah. that's why. I did a show that was for a drag act um, and there was uh, male strippers are cutting about and um, they've got like grinders and they're kind of hitting them <laughs> off with like metal pants and all that and making spark. Yeah, we know the one. We know the one. And I'm just like, what the hell's going on? Um, That's, the next, That's going to be our next gig. What are you on about? That's <laughs> <Is> it. It's <laughs> the next video. <laughs> a metal cod piece. <laughs> but they, they turned up with this really, really dodgy um, USB key and they were like, all our music's on this, you need to play it. And they were going like, uh, or they, the name of the guy was also the name of the song. Like his name was Sonny or something. It's like Sonny's song, and I'm going, who, there's like eighties. Who the hell's Sonny? You know. And um, they 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 put the key in the the laptop and killed it. And so that was it. No music for the for the, the dance. And it was like, ah, oh, so you run around trying to find a laptop that you could play their music off and all that but it was all because they had one of these really cheap shonky the, the thing was all metal and it must have just shorted it and uh, what ended up happening was one of the DJs took his laptop to bits just so he could get the batter out so it wouldn't do it and then plugged it in and got it working but that was that was a bit of the seat of the pants thing because you had all these people who were drunk just been waiting like, yeah. the, 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 the vibe had been killed yeah they'd just been fired up by the, yeah, the, the guys there and then I the grinders <laughs> <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> I had the fear because uh, it, it was like they were wild and 
So thanks so much, Chris, for working on the video with us. It was it was honestly a real pleasure, and uh, we're, we're glad to have you back on for a Dare Miss Mondays. It's been great. Thanks. The video for In My Dreams comes out this Friday. If you've not already checked the single out, it's on all good streaming platforms. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like this content. And go check out Project Fi. The links will all be in the description. What's the best way to get in touch to find out more? I think the best way is to type in Project Fi into Instagram and you'll you'll find it. I think I'm the only one there. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. You've been watching Dermist Mondays. We'll catch you next week. Do you want to sign us off, Chris? Thank you. Thanks. You need to give us some. You need to give us yeah, something. That's not good enough. It needs to be a, oh, yeah. a really I'll, 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 obscure. It's got to be a weird. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I always do. A, Bye. <laughs> and Craig does a see ya. So yeah, you yeah. think of something. You think cheerio. Of something on the spot. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love a cheerio. Get the dog in. <laughs> <laughs> cheerio. See.